let's go to the final segment of the dystopian side, my friend, which is the two to 10 years. Yeah. Um, I surely hope your mission, and I would love to support, you know, the, the data sets and, and how we tilt the singularity of AI pro humanity's future. Um, but in the next two to 10 years, as this wave of enablement and disruption sort of hits the world and people aren't ready for it and they start to see job loss, they start to see, um, you know, fake news, they start to see terrorist activities using AIs. I mean, terrorism in the, in the past used to be very brutal. Um, it can be very precise. What are your thoughts over the next, of this time period? What's your concerns? It's, oh, I, I'm actually a pessimist at the core, even though I come across as an optimist. I'm very, very worried about the world and society and the fabric of society. Because again, we don't have an agreement of what society is. And this fundamentally changes the stories of society as well as real economic impacts like a deflationary massive collapse as some of these areas that were so expensive, the cost comes down to nothing. I think the only thing we can do is use this technology deliberately to come together as a society to coordinate us, stoke entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So you can create brand new jobs faster than the jobs are lost. Um, and democratize this to the world because the West has maxed out its credit card. Like you saw COVID to do nothing trillion dollars. I mean, it was just, spent. exactly. It was like just spend, spend, spend whatever you need you just, can't just, really, to, just to keep society from, uh, you know, uh, going hypothermic. But then you had this massive increase in savings rates because nobody could go out. Uh -huh. And we've nearly burned through that in the US now. And so that led to inflation. Now we've got a deflation. So yes. you probably got another little bout of inflation, but then never the same again is a really powerful thing. Every teacher in the world could never set essays for homework again, because some kids would use chat GPT and some kids wouldn't. Industry after industry, that will happen now. And we need to stoke innovation to come up with that. So for example, in, in the US, there's the CHIPS Act, $10 billion yes. has been allocated to regional centers of excellence in AI. Those must be generative AI centers thinking about job creation as the core, thinking about meaning as the core. And we need to have a discussion again, as a society community, as individuals with our families, about meaning, about objective functions, when this technology does come, because it's here right now. Hmm. And I'm worried that we're not having these discussions. I love that. I mean, that is so fundamentally true. What are we trying to even train our kids for? Because we need to what, anchor. Yeah, we need to have a vision to target. Um, because if you're training for your Ferrari, um, if that's the meaning, if that's, or you're, or you're looking to become a Wall Street banker, I mean, what is it? it it's, it's no longer the pursuit of capital, it's the pursuit of what? Well, it's, you know, capital is there, but you'll never have enough. There will always be someone who has more. There needs to be something intrinsic here. And again, this is where, you know, for all the things, religious institutions are an anchor at times of chaos. <laughs> And they are there in the poorest places in the world. You don't have to agree, but they're just a story that brings together a group. You know, there are other stories. And again, I think we need to tell better stories, even as the world becomes more chaotic. We need to align on things like climate, whereby the whole world is hot right now, you know? Yeah. We need to have more positive views of that because a lot of the discussions are negative. And how can we use this technology and come together to solve that? How can we come together as a group so that we can share in the abundance. Again, like I said, one of the things for this Green Writers Guild and SAG thing may be act to coalitions that can benefit from the bounty. We may have to deploy a UBI in the next five to 10 years. Yeah. So UBI is one of the solutions, and I, I do believe uh, it's an inevitable. I think, as especially as we start to see Optimus and Figure and other humanoid robots coming online, driven by, driven by our next generation AI, able to do any and all work, you know, I think taxing those robots or taxing the AI models to generate revenue and then providing it as UBI. But the challenge is the individual who is living off of this and doesn't have a purpose in life. And that's the thing. We need to try and figure out how to give people more of an anchor, more of purpose, because the existential angst will be amplified deliberately by some parties. Yes. Because they'll be looking to take down society. And you need to create better, more optimistic views of the future. You need to have anchoring and build stronger communities. And you need to empower them. And this technology is empowering. Again, for the poorest kids in Africa to our underprivileged communities, 
it can be massively democratizing because mm -hmm. all of a sudden they have all the expertise in the world available. And Global problems, local solutions. We have to get this technology out to... And they can dream. As many people. They can dream. They can dream. Uh, and the ROI great. is much larger there yeah. than up there. Yeah. And by the way, uh, you know, most people don't know this. You, as you think about... Uh, uh, global warfare, you know, what's going on in Ukraine and Russia and so forth. It's on the whole, the world is more peaceful than it's ever been, except if you take out Ukraine at the moment. And, and the challenge has been in Africa, where you have a young population mm. um, who don't aren't clear about their future. But if you can empower them, um, Wait, educate them, it transforms the world. China became the engine of growth in the world. India is coming up, and then Africa can next. be the next yeah, one. For sure. If we give them the infrastructure, the technology, and put it in their hands, because there's no debt there, because there's no money. Yeah. <laughs> but there's value, and there's value massive to be resources. Created. Huge to resources. To feed the world, to uh, provide power to the world. If we can coordinate, and again, part of this is your own personal co pilot, your own personal Jarvis. And I think of this as the co pilot pilot model. We will also have AIs that we can come together that can coordinate our knowledge in the most important areas and allocate resources. We have to build those right because those will become incredibly powerful. But we all know that we have enough to feed every person in the world and we're not doing it because we don't have the pilots. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but I just to say this again, we have the potential to uplift every man, woman, and child on this planet. The resources are there, the ability to create abundance, and it really, uh, these are the tools that enable that. And it gets me excited, and we have, to, we have to guide and survive and thrive this decade ahead. Yeah, I think this is something where we have to appreciate the nuance of there are real dangers in any upheaval. This technology will change society as we know it for our kids as they grow up in the next decade. Two decades from now, completely different. And again, the technology is here now. It's not us pie in the sky, everyone's going to live in a metaverse and all this. It's here right now, even if it's stopped, but it's not going to stop. It's only going to accelerate.